Now we're going to solve equations graphically using the calculator. Uh, we've been working with quadratic equations, but this process can be used for any type of equation. So now this is called finding the zeros. Now when you find the zeros, sometimes it's called finding the roots, the solutions, or the x-intercepts. So first thing you've got to do is make sure all your terms is to one side, normally the left, which means zero should be on the right. That's where they get the word zero. Type the left side of the equation into y1. So in your calculator, we're going to go here and we're going to type in the equation. Press graph. Okay. Well, when you press graph, uh, if you don't see where the equation intersects the x-axis, then manipulate the window settings so that you can see the intersection. And we are concerned about the x-axis. Then we're going to press second, trace. Let me get my calculator back up. So we've done second trace before for the calc menu when we were finding minimum and maximum. Well, here's number two. Here's zero. Okay? And that's what we're going to be pressing here in just a bit. And again, this is used to find the zeros, roots, solutions, or x-intercepts. And you should now see the following question. Left bound. Well, we've seen this before. And before we typed in an x value that's to the left, of what we wanted. In this case, to the left of the intersection of the equation and the x-axis. Then we press enter. And you should now see an arrow appear on the left side part of the screen. Uh, another question pops up, says right bound. You type in an x-value that's to the right of that intersection of the equation and the x-axis that you're after, and then press enter. And you see another arrow appear. And you now get the following question, and you should have expected this. Guess, but we don't. I mean, you've done enough work. Why should we do this? Just press Enter. And you should now see the word zero on your display screen with x equal a number, which is your solution, and y equals zero. You're after the x value. So let's try some of these. Now it says right here, remember, if there's more than one intersection, then you have to do this process for all of them. So solve the following graphically, round to the second decimal place if necessary. Let me get my calculator. i got to go back to y equals because I don't have a graph in there. And in this particular problem, everything's over to the left. I see zero on the right. So let's type this in. I've got x squared plus square root of 3. Only the 3 is under the radical, so i got to close that uh, parentheses so the calculator understands that. Minus 5. Now let me ask it to graph. And it hits my x-axis in two places. I'm after this one and this one. So I always go left to right, so I'm going to go after this one first. So second trace for the calc menu. I am after the x-intercept, so that's number 2, 0. There's my first question, left bound. Well, this, where it hits, it looks like it's between negative 3 and negative 4. So I'm going to type in negative 5 and hit enter. So there's my arrow. It appeared. And now the qu next question is right bound. So since this is between negative 3 and negative 4, I'm going to type in negative 2 and enter. Now you have to corner or uh, set boundaries around these one at a time. So I can't put a boundary here and one all the way over here because it would include two of them. I only want to include one uh, intersection at a time. There's the guess and right here, guess, nope, enter. There's my word zero and your cursor should be blinking on the one that you were after. So if I'm rounding to the second decimal place, which is right here, it would be negative 3.26. So write that down, because we've got another one we have to go after. Okay, my next one. Second trace for calc menu, number 2. Now this one, it looks like it's near 2, so I'm going to type in uh, any of these numbers right in here that's to the left, but not including this where it hits. So I'm going to type in 0. Uh, 
and we're going to type in 3. There's a bunch of different values that you can type in as long as you um, just have your boundaries around one intersection at a time. And I don't guess. So my answer is 1.53. So write that down because when I click this box, my calculator disappears. I remember that one. Yep, that was the other one. Okay, let's go try this one. Let me get my calculator back up. Issue here is not all terms are over to one side, so I've got to move. So I'm going to move pi x over and my, my 5 over. So it would be 2x squared. Clear this out. So 2x squared minus, if I have to move that term, I have to subtract. I've got pi here, right above your caret symbol, but to access it, it's color coordinated. So second caret for the pi, x, and also we have to move the 5 over, so minus 5. Okay? So you might write under this 2x squared minus pi x minus 5 equals 0. Just to remind yourself, you've got to get it in that form. So let me ask it to graph. Okay, it's twice, so I have to go after both of them. So second trace for the calc menu, number two. This one, it looks like it's around negative one, so I'm going to type in negative two for left bound and zero for right. And I've got it bounded in there, no guessing. So to the hundreds, negative point nine eight. So write that down. And now we'll go for the next one. Second trace for zero. This one looks like it's between two and three. So a value to the left of that, I'm going to type in one. Type in four. Enter. So 2.55. So write that one down. Let me see what I have under in my box here. So that should be the values that we that we found just a few minutes ago. Now these are quadratics. We've been playing with quadratics. Okay. Uh, this one is a fourth power, or my degree is four. That's the largest exponent I see. And let's type that in. I've got to move these two terms over, so I'd have x to the fourth plus three x cubed minus two x squared minus five x plus one. So I've got x raised to the fourth plus 3x. Remember, I like the cube off the math menu because it's cuter. Uh, minus 2x squared. Now subtract the 5x and add the 1 in order to get all terms to one side. Okay, let me ask it to graph. It hits four times, and there, there's, there is a, a pattern here. In example one and example two, my degree on those were two, and they did hit twice. In this one, my degree is four. Whatever your largest exponent is, that's how many times it is possible, just possible, that your curve can hit the x-axis. And this one, yeah, it did. So let's go after this one. Let me see, it's negative 1, negative 2. So it looks like it's about around negative 3. So second trace for the calc menu, number 2. And I'm going to type in negative 4 and negative 2. And hit enter. So to the hundreds, negative 3.09. So write that down, negative 3.09. Now let's go after this next one. Second trace for the calc menu for 0. Uh, this is negative 1, negative 2. I'm going to type in negative 2. Now I think I could possibly put in negative 1, but I think I'd like to get a little bit further away, so I'm going to type in negative 0.5. And now hit enter. And, and it's blinking on the one I want. So to the hundreds, 
negative 1.36. So write that one down. Now we'll go for this one. Second trace, number two. I'm going to type in negative 0.5 and 0.5 because it looks like it's very close to zero. Pretty close. So to the hundreds, that would be 0.19. So write that one down. We've only got one more. Put that one right there. So second, trace, calc menu, number two for zero. I'm going to type in 0.5 and two. It's blinking on my last one. So my zero is 1.26. 1 1.26. So let me move my box here. And the ones that you've written down, see if those are the same ones. They should be. Um, and that's how you solve an equation graphically. You type it in, but first you've got to make sure all terms are to the uh, left-hand side and zero to the right. Type it in, and you get each one, of every, wherever it hits the x-axis, you've got to get each one of those. Okay? Talk to you later. Bye-bye.